Hello and welcome. Today we're going to completely tear down this B28 for my E46. We need to do many things. I need to repair the block, I need to clean up many things, there's carbon deposits to be removed and the parts need to be spruced up. Because we've got no time to waste, I'm just going to start and show you the dismantling process. For the rest, I just pray that other retard never touched the hot bolts because that would be ex. Ah, he touched the hot bolts because this one is loose. Ah, no. Yeah, this engine is not usable right now. Since the hot bolts have been off and somebody has dug into this engine a lot deeper than anticipated, we have to check if it turns over, which I didn't do when I bought it, so blame me, I guess. We're fine to proceed. Now I'm gonna order the engine stand, because this is the first time I've had the engine out of a car, so yeah, we'll have to see. I've also just identified all of the oil pan bolts. These are really oiled up, which is oil pan, and they have a pointy tip. Yeah, in case you're in a similar situation, these are your oil pan balls. So, I've also just taken off the reinforcement plate, the oil pan, and the pickup tube for the oil pump. And right here, everything looks really fine. Not a single rod has spun, so we can at least use the bottom end. We're gonna complete the teardown of this engine once we have my engine stand and yeah we also need to reinforce this because this is a common issue and I like revving the engine high slash limiting it so um, yeah we'll have to see how uh, we can prepare this engine for the upcoming abuse it's gonna get. Now we have our B28 on an engine stand. I've cleaned the engine really thoroughly, spent about uh, eight cans of brake clean on it because it was really disgusting it was seeping oil from every single seal so my plan with this engine is now we're gonna take off the head and then we're gonna reseal it every gasket and then it's just gonna live in my E46 for like one year two years then it's gonna come out because I have a different project with the B28 crank because this engine is just temporary just needs to hold up for one year so not gonna have to spend any major money on it. I bought some new uh, rod bearings because 290k is already a lot for those. For the main bearings I'm not even gonna take them out and check them because these usually last double the life of rod bearings so new rod bearings should give us another 20-30 thousand kilometers without issues and yeah that's pretty much all I'm gonna need so let's tear down the engine even further. My original plan with this engine was to just give it a reseal, chuck it back into the car. Midway through I decided to actually change the rod bearings because 290k is a lot and we're gonna check them in this episode because one of these bolts has been taken out, now I need to undo them all. The issue with these is that they usually crack the threads and rip out the threads when you take them out and um, yeah that's what I fear and then you need to helicoil the block which is another thing where you need an expensive tool, it costs around 500 bucks. I'm starting to feel like this engine was not a good deal after all, but um, whatever. Now we're just gonna take out all the bolts since we have to. This one did not take any threads with it, so it's good. The issue with the threads taking out is usually just uh, when the engine was overheated, but the M52 TRUs run like hotter than M54s, so it happens even quicker. The big issue is with this that you're actually supposed to take out the cylinder head bolts from outside to inside and the guide chose the one that is pretty much in the middle hoping that nothing goes wrong. Oh this one was also loose. Great. Also from the cleanliness of this engine I know that it didn't get uh, any regular oil changes because um, yeah, it's really, really stained, like badly. <coughs> oh, this is really easy, what the f So, upon closer inspection, the head gasket looks really fine. Didn't burn through on the single cylinder from the looks of it, but there is some really weird thing going on. Not the carbon coating, well that's normal. 
Can somebody explain to me what that is? Because that does not look like carbon deposits. It's just like rust. It looks like rust. It's, it's in all the cylinders except three and four. That's really weird. A bit of carbon is normal, but this is quite a lot. Now I'm just gonna take off uh, all the timing case bolts, which have been conveniently loosened already. Should just be a bunch of 10 mils. These engines pretty much never suffer from timing chain failures. The only thing they're known for is uh, the oil pump nut, which uh, backs off because there's slack in the oil pump chain and then it just wiggles around uh, when you hit limiter. So uh, I just tacked the nut onto the actual oil pump because on these engines I like to rev them high and that's just an extra precaution. When I do the ECU reprogrammation, I'm going to raise the limiter to 6,900 or even 7K. So uh, it's better to be safe than sorry. These guides are pretty worn, nothing uh, close to failure, but uh, I don't think, yeah, this is really deep. This is like almost a millimeter. Look, this one really has some deep grooves. I ordered these new with timing chains. I think I'm going to keep the timing chains and just put the old ones back in because these are pretty much never stretched and uh, just change the guides because uh, these have actually gotten quite a beating which I'm really surprised. Well 290k kilometers is quite a lot but uh, didn't think that the guides would be so compromised actually. This one has a lot less wear, quite a bit in some places but still okay. This one is quite disgusting with a lot of varnish on it. The amount of varnish and sludge on there is crazy. As far as I can tell all the threads look healthy and we didn't rip any of them out so you should be fine to just torque the new bolts down because I really don't want to spend 500 euros just to get a proper time cert kit where you can actually do the counter bore and then put the thread in the correct position like 90 degrees towards the surface. Just engine work requires a lot of tools and I just have like basic tools so I don't really have the opportunity to do everything in house which would be really neat. Unfortunately that's just not possible. I've pre-loosened all of these bolts. They will have to go back in the same positioning. This bearing actually looks pretty good for the kilometers this engine has, but it's already gone through the first coating and the second one is pretty much through. So yeah, this is the bottom part and it doesn't get as much load as the top part just because of how the engine works. So the top part is gonna look worse. As I've just explained, the top bearing looks worse. As you can see, it's down to the copper base right there. Don't know how good it picks up on camera while well, you can see it. And because of the rod pushing down onto the crank, the top part of the bearing always has more wear and uh, it would have still made a lot of kilometers before going kaboom, but uh, definitely in time that we change these. So 290k kilometers on the rod bearings, these are already properly used, so I guess the main bearings will do 400k kilometers, no issues. Cylinder 1 put up quite a fight towards the end, just because of all the carbon deposits we need to get the rings through. And speaking of the rings, the oil ring is really gunked up, like really gunked up. Good thing we're cleaning these. I've actually decided that I was going to try to clean the pistons and remove the carbon buildup with my trusty ultrasonic cleaner and to my surprise this works really really well. It really like gives the piston everything back and cleans it completely. So uh, I'll just keep at it with this. This also gives me a lot more time to clean other parts of the engine so the only thing I need to pay attention to is that I need to spray it with oil because otherwise it's just instantly gonna rust. This one will need to go back in tomorrow. It's around midnight right now, so I'll have to get to sleep. And um, yeah, then I'll clean this tomorrow. So, and this is the timing case. I've repainted it. Looks really, really shiny. A bit too shiny in my opinion. But unfortunately, I grabbed the first uh, heat resistant paint up to 800 degrees I could find. And um, yeah, 
apparently it's too shiny. Still need to clean the oil pickup tube. I'm not gonna paint that. I've already cleaned the oil baffle. I've cleaned the oil pan very thoroughly. We also need to uh, paint this because I want it to be really shiny. I'll give it a quick sand and then paint it as well. I've cleaned the block really thoroughly before starting with all the work and yeah, it is uh, okay. I'm not gonna paint it because we still need to fix this. Some of you know from the previous video that the thread is broke. Because the threads on the old piece were mangled, we just cut it off and then completely filled it back up. This side is already filed down and it's completely flat. So now we just need to get the gearbox out of the car mount it with the other three mounting spots and then cut the thread in a position where it's going to mount up 100%. I actually wanted to do that with the plate that goes in between the engine and the gearbox but I just figured I'd play it safe and do it with the gearbox because then I can be 100% sure. And now I'm going to show you our new pistons and by new I mean properly cleaned. I have did this while I didn't have the camera and um, yeah they look pretty much uh, New. There's a few like really hard carbon deposits I couldn't get off but for the most part these look really really good right now. There's no carbon deposits before they were like half a mil so really really thick. Now that we've scraped off all the head gasket material and went over it with some fine scotch bright, looks like this. There's no more hills on it from gasket material being stuck on there. And you can still see the machining marks, so we didn't take off any material, we just removed everything that was still encrusted onto the block. Now we just need to make sure to clean out all the debris from the water passages, oil passages and from the headboard threads. We need to be really careful doing this because I noticed something. On the cylinder head I noticed this piece being stuck in the cooling jackets. Well, this is part of an old water pump that exploded. There's pieces in there. There you can see the white piece on the inside. I somehow need to get all of that out and then do the same process on the head. Great news guys, today I checked the block and the head with a real straight edge. I borrowed it from a friend. And our head and block, they're ready to use. They're still within tolerance. Mm -hmm. 